What's up guys and girls? So people talk about superficiality. Oh, you're so shallow, you're so superficial. How could you like someone based off just that? Well, I'm here to pose the counter philosophical argument that what's so wrong with this? I mean, think about it. Why exactly would you want to hook up with a person? Or why would you want a person to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. You can literally list the reasons generally on your hand. And outside these reasons, if none of these pass, then literally you there's no logical reason for you to have any sort of contact or interaction with another human being. And because of that, There really isn't much regarding superficiality. So let's let me let me illustrate so that you guys can have a better example. Why do you like someone? And why do you like this person and you don't like this person? Looks, personality, wealth, reputation, power. And so those are the general categories uh reputation or power again it's different depending on your age but more or less the same thing popularity click in uh high school or college uh versus something else once you're in, out in the real world but think about this without these aspects and i'm sure i'm missing maybe one or two but without any of these aspect aspects um there lies nothing left to differentiate that human being from just another animal or creature from another species or even an alien or inanimate object in a certain way. Um, not always though, there is that sort of, I guess one other aspect is that animal-like, mammalian-like belonging I guess you can have, but more or less Without these things, it's like you wouldn't give a crap if this guy was an inanimate object or something of another species or an alien for that matter. And so half of these things are superficial. Let's just, just put it out there. This is what is typically categorized as superficial. Looks, so that encompasses everything um, from how you dress and sure there's a lot of subdivisions underlying those things and sure how you dress in fashion also imply a lot of things about your social economic upbringing your current background your net worth um and net worth ties into other sort of free freaking things that tie back into re reputation like having a high net worth means that you are either like a very successful person you have a lot of very attractive qualities that may tie into your personality and so forth. So these things are intertwined to a very complex level. I mean, if someone's rich, you either think that they are good for nothing, got lucky, or some people might think that this guy worked really hard, therefore he is very successful, he, he's achieved something great, he has worked for it, he deserves it, he, he's... You know, conquered all odds and built this business from the ground up after busting his butt, etc., etc. And these may be qualities that intertwine with each other. So, what exactly is superficial in a way, and how are the how can you just separate these things and just say, oh, that's superficial? But let's let's play the devil's ad advocate here and say, okay, let's just call these. Two of these five criteria are superficial. So let's cut, the, cut that out. Let's say we can't have anyone who has any of these things. Looks not included. Uh, what else? Looks not included. Um, reputation. Let's not include power. Let's not include money. Let's not include. So I'm being very, very... Um, picky here and that leaves what what does that really leave the only real thing that's truly unsuperficial 
is personality. And saying that is a slight stretch because again, these things are related, but not really because personality is in itself an independent thing to many other superficial things. So let's, let's break it down really. The only true superficial thing more or less is your personality. So putting aside superficial things, the only reason that you would want to hang out with this person, that you would like this person from un, compared to any other human being or any other object lies in their personality. So is that really something that can be taken in the real world? Um, and in my experience, not really, because a lot of people will judge, they will decide, and they will ignore and so forth based on looks or some other aspect um, based on how they talk to other people, what people they hang around, before they even get a chance to truly experience that person's personality. Not all the time though, and truth be told, most people have an average personality that is more or less the same and more or less rather dull. So if that is the case, then where does that put us? It puts us in a scenario where the average person is average and falls into the greater majority of the bell curve. And so if your standards are higher than an average personality, which some people lead to imply a dull personality, that's subject to, again, personal opinion. I think that the average personality is probably better than dull or boring. But if we accept that, then more or less what we're saying here is that superficiality, and again, um, I, I would love for someone to uh, disagree. I'm sure there's going to be haters in the comments that would be like, ah, you missed something. No, 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 no. Sure. Um, I, would, I would love to expand this ar argument with some sort of counter argument in the discussion. And I'm tr really trying to uh, disprove this myself, but um, I, w I would be lo happy to disprove this. But um, like, honestly, it's like, why would you like a girl for instance why what are the reasons that you like this girl or that you're attracted to this girl there's looks there's personality and then there's all this other minor stuff reputation um stuff like that and again personality spans a dramatic range of different things from uh her reminding you of the way uh the, the things you did, the childhood hobbies you had, the places you grew up, maybe she has that southern accent or she's a beach girl and she likes surfing like you. Again, these, these things fall into personality, but um, it really culminates into two big things, looks and personality. And so it really is like in terms of superficiality in itself, it's like, okay, let's put looks aside. You have personality left and then a bunch of other stuff, reputation, uh, money, and so forth. And we're, we're lumping that with superficiality with looks. What, what we end up with is the core personality. And in the real world, again, just reiterating uh, to, to, to finish up, um, a lot of people don't really give you that chance and a lot of people fall into this average sort of personality. So, the really only differentiation ends up being the superficial stuff. Um, and so what we can do and what we do is we sort of mingle and try and match based off personality and interests as well. And so um, for those of you out there who may be having a tough time, um, and uh, again, I, I know you where you guys are coming from, where you're like, it's, it's not working out. How can I improve myself? Again, I would recommend a full out approach um, from everything to superficial stuff to non superficial stuff because um, at the end of the day, 
the the whole point of this is that yeah superficial stuff in certain ways are interrelated and because of that both aspects can be improved if you want your best chance at uh increasing your chances um now that again that lies into another big topic of this video that i want to hammer through which is does it freaking matter like should we even be concerned about super superficiality and should we be offended about it and i think like um again i think it's preposterous because looks to a certain extent really are an aspect of you and coming from the slob that i am you know horrible with fashion and so forth getting up in the mornings i do rarely any grooming uh, my fashion is par partially due to not having a lot of cash to buy a lot of clothes and stuff when I was growing up. Um, but again, it's a lot of it has to do with socioeconomic stuff. Um, again, survivability stuff. People with better clothing who have better fashion usually are higher income. And therefore, there's a natural selection for people to be attracted to the ones who have these sort of items for a better chance at survivability so it's we're all just pretty much instruments of evolution and sur surviving and reproducing uh, more or less and so that's that's really all i want to say uh as always like favorite comment and subscribe